Hi Hayden, hi everyone. I'm Florian, responsible of Be Cool International Development. Today I have the chance to talk to Hayden. Simple is an Amazon seller and a Be Cool user. I had the chance to talk to him a few times already, and I thought it would have been a great idea if he can share his experience and expertise to other sellers. So welcome, Hayden, and thanks for your time. How are you? Thank you. Yeah, I'm great. It's it's, it's good to uh, good to see you. All right, that's great. So let's go directly to uh, the question we have for you. Uh, as you know, you are the stars of the show today. Everything is about you. So maybe could you briefly introduce yourself and to our audience? Sure. My name is Hayden. Um, I've been an Amazon seller for just a short while now, pro probably three years, but more like uh, one, one and a half years serious. And um, I've tried a bunch of different jobs. I stopped punching a clock probably like 12 years ago and just kind of working on my own. That's, that's what I prefer. And um, I don't know, Amazon's a fun journey. I, I, I recommend it for someone who wants to, you know, have, have their own free time and a little bit of freedom and some cash in their pocket. <laughs> so the reason why you start your Amazon business was to, what was that exactly? Could you, could you explain to us? I've always wanted to do something that, um, that I could scale like on my own time. And I didn't really realize that you could do that with Amazon. And I was just, just like most people just kind of like watching YouTube videos and, you know, different side hustles of how you can make money. And I've tried so many of them, but, um, Amazon caught my attention because, um, I didn't really realize that I could go out and get used things and then sell them. I've always was under the impression that everything on Amazon is, is new. So yeah, I got into the book game. I started just like most people, just like going to thrift stores and scanning books and stuff like that. And, uh, just went from there. How long you've been selling on Amazon right now? Um, I've been selling on Amazon for about two years. I did a bunch of eBay before that. Uh, the funny thing was my sales and like the velocity and how serious everything got was probably right around the pandemic, probably right around March. Yeah, that's the time the Amazon business got even bigger since everyone was buying online. So yeah. I guess that was a really good time to become more serious on your Amazon business. And how was it at the beginning? Could you share with uh, our audience maybe the difficulty, difficulties you faced at the beginning as an Amazon seller? Sure. So to begin, you have the struggles of trying to figure out how you're going to implement all these different tools. So there's different software you're comparing, depending on what your core group is, friends or, you know, colleagues that are doing the same thing, um, depending on that core, they're always giving you like a bunch of different advice and you just have to figure out what works for you. And so uh, you're getting like a lot of bad books. Uh, you know, you're trying to find the, the rank and what it all means. And, um, you know, you're just, you're just making a, a bunch of bad buying decisions but it's okay it's just like all kinds of businesses struggle in the beginning you know yeah of course i mean you just have to i mean it's just about experience then i guess by experience you will know which book to buy and which one would be the more profitable for you and sourcing will become easier i guess so you are selling only books right now on amazon i am selling books and media so i dove into like cds dv uh, lots of blu-rays and dvds okay. video games so books and media are my bread and butter probably 90 or 85 percent books that's great you start to diversify the product you're selling on amazon which means like you're doing great and mm -hmm. so how many hours a week 
do you spend on your Amazon business? I don't overly spend if, if, if I don't need to. I mean, once I'm done sourcing and I reprice and everything, uh, I'm, I'm done. I, I really don't need to worry too much about it. But um, for me, I've been doing less and less of the job that I've had for like 12, 13 years. And I'm only doing that like on Monday and Tuesday. And then Amazon is pretty much like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the weekend if I need it. Okay. But for me, for me, I, I know this sounds kind of cliche, but I, I don't really even consider it work. I like it so much. I, I dive into the numbers. I'm a stat geek and I, I just, I love it. That's great. That's great to hear. I mean, as soon as you do something you like, I think you don't consider that as a job anymore. So that's fantastic. So Hayden, you have been using uh, Be Cool uh, for a few months now. I know that. And I can't wait uh, to listen to you sharing your experience using Be Cool. So first of all, we can maybe you could let us know when did you start using uh, an Amazon repricer? So I know you're using the Be Cool repricer right now. So was mm -hmm. equal to your first repricer? Did you use another repricer before? And why did you use a repricer at the beginning? Sure. Um, so when I first started, I was I was cherry picking, and and uh, I I met some some super influential booksellers, uh, Caleb Roth, a bunch of other like really good um, sellers, and they kind of pointed me to the direction of bulk selling. Once I started doing that, my inventory just shot, it shot way up. And then I was like, well, manual repricing is just not working. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just like anything else when you grow your business, like you, you need different tools, you need to start implementing things, maybe you get some help. When I started the, this certain repricer, it, it worked. But I found myself um, spending so much time on it that I was like, this, it kind of ran its course, I guess you could say. Yeah. yeah. So this is when you understood uh, that you might need a, a tool to help you running your business. So was Be Cool your first repricer? Did you use another one before? I just, I, I manually repriced for, for, for as long as I could. <laughs> And then I got uh, another repricer and I used that for probably three or four months. It had some updates. Like it, it, it got pretty buggy. It, it kind of crashed on me a few times. And um, yeah, I, I stopped using that one. And Be Cool came along and it took, it was kind of a learning curve for certain things. Mm -hmm. But then once I, once I realized that, oh, uh, just FBA low and, uh, uh, buy box it's pretty it's pretty basic it, it did a lot of work for me so would you say that um one of the advantage of be cool is like first it does the job but it's also very easy to to use yeah it's it's pretty easy to use you have to figure out how it integrates to amazon because mm -hmm. amazon's always trying to give you that low or high price error or whatever so you you have to figure that out Okay. But once you get once you get rolling, it's pretty easy. I, I love it. That's amazing. So you've been using Be Cool for a few months now, and so which rule are you using? Uh, so we have the new AI rules. Are you using those ones, or are you still on the um, uh, rule based? Are you still on the rule based one? Yeah. So um, the AI to me is the way that I would like to implement everything because it just seems to be the sales velocity seems even higher and it seems like it's pushing buy box even more. And why, why not just go with just what works the best? I've been kind of uh, moving all my listings to uh, Equalizer and Sales Booster. Okay. I kind of I experiment, put them head to head and, and like run them together and uh i don't think there's anything you can't go wrong with either of them i think you could just experiment and figure out what works for you i see i mean that's really great to have these kind of feedbacks because this is exactly the, the advantages of these rules 
like get more buy box and increase the sales or increase the the profit according to what you need so you can choose different rules so um, thank you for these feedbacks that's very valuable for, for us and i guess for our our viewers also maybe more about your experience selling on amazon i would like to ask a question that i ask uh, other sellers as well if you have three mm -hmm. tips uh for new starters what would it be uh, i'm sure i i know from just making mistakes that the first thing is you need to figure out what you're good at and just key in on it because you're going to get outside advice you're going to be like oh should i do you know should i do wholesale or should i you know do resale or should i do you know, drop shipping, or there's there's so many different things. You just need to key in on mm -hmm. what works for you, and to just keep getting better at what you do is mm -hmm. relationships. So if you're going to Goodwill or whatever place you like sourcing, uh, talk to the manager and the employees. Okay. Just whatever okay. whatever you have to do. If you have to give them a donut, if you have to buy them Taco Bell or whatever then then do it because being friendly to them they're going to give you access that you know other people might not have and um also i call everyone i call everyone on the phone and see how they're doing you know do you have some things that you want to get rid of um just be like super creative like have a business card that that you can hand out start giving people starbucks mm -hmm. you know gift cards or something that's all that stuff that's really good advice again so the first one would be don't be afraid to start small and this yeah. is very good advice because many people uh, ask these questions they are they want to talk they, they want to start selling on amazon and they are asking mm -hmm. about the budget to start so don't be afraid to start small and the second right. is relationship as you said, yeah. So that's amazing advice. Uh, thanks for that. How about your resort since you use it? Uh, sales resort or buy box win resort? How is it? The buy box is always what you're shooting for. That's that's gonna get you the, the, the most profit. So I see buy box wins going I don't know, like 30, 35% more so and sales. Yeah, and and sales are easily like this, like about the same, like forty percent more. It's a lot more. That's uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, that's really awesome. Like it's um, it's a pleasure really to hear this kind of feedbacks again uh, because we aim to help the sellers as much as we can. So we try to develop the perfect tools for you. So really glad to to, to hear that. Is there one mistake? you made at the beginning or even like recently small or big but you think it might be interesting to uh, tell our audience today maybe they are new sellers or people think about selling on amazon and if you can tell them maybe something they shouldn't do yeah uh well specifically for for books or like any product i would just say i would just say do do the do the due diligence and and, and um, research the product before you buy it because sometimes um you see profit before you see like sales rank and um the problem with that is that uh the profit could be good but it's not good at all if you put it in the amazon inventory and it just sits there so you need to find things that sell fast especially since now amazon is putting the kind of put in the screws to us with the uh inventory yes um the ipi mm -hmm. limits so um yeah i i like a lot of sellers i would have to go into inventory and um if you're doing any sort of bulk it's a pretty sad experience when you go and you search by the date and you go oh my goodness like you realize all your mistakes like what is that? Why did I buy that? Why is this only eight dollars? Why is that seven dollars? Yeah. And then you're just tossing things. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so 
if your buy cost was very, very low, um, you're still eating that money. It's, it's still a loss. Mm. So that's another thing. It, if you're going to take a risk on something, make just make sure the buy cost is really low so that worst case scenario, you know, you're not losing so much money on every, you know, on every item. For the people who watch this video, uh, when I ask this kind of question, it's very hard to reply because uh, <laughs> it's the same with other sellers that I talk to. When we ask for one mistake, it's, I mean, every day you do mistake, I think, and every day you do yeah. things too. So it, it, it's hard to reply, but this is definitely a good advice. The sourcing is very important because yeah. that will involve in your mean price and the mean price is in order to be competitive with all the com competitors. That would be, yeah. uh, this is very important. So right. very good advice. Uh, thank you, Aiden, for that. And so maybe the, the last question this time, I mean, in what direction are you going? Do you want to uh, right. focus on Amazon 100% of your time and maybe like quit your job? You said you still work like yeah. one days a week in that job. I'd say like, it's, it's strange. It's kind of like one to two and a half days at the other job. Okay. I, I try to get it done by Tuesday because I'm all, I always have so much stuff to do in Amazon or catch up or re, or, you know, reprice or send into Amazon. Yeah. I see, I see my business going more from what I do now as like a bulk seller to online arbitrage mm -hmm. and, you know, fi finding books that way, sending them to a prep center and just kind of being more hands off. But, um, I don't know. I, I love having the book in my hand. I like scanning the book. You know, a lot of people like everything electronic. I like something that you can hold, you know, yeah, like a CD yeah. or a record or a video old game. Copy, right? <laughs> yeah. I like old school mixed in with new school. So I'll do AI, <laughs> then I'll do, and then I'll sell like CDs or DVDs, you know? Yeah, that's a good mix. That's a good mix. Yeah. I mean, and then yeah. you good result. So, don't change anything and just keep the same. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think uh, for the, other, the sellers out there, there's nothing wrong with starting really small, like saying, okay, I have um, $500. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do with that $500? Well, buy like um, 250 items that are $2, right? Yeah. And then on, on every one of that two dollar item, try to try to see that if you can get thirty percent return of investment. Yeah. And then just keep and then put that money straight back in. Don't touch that money. Put it straight back in, and then just start scaling it. And then before you know it, you'll you'll be you'll you'll need a repricer. You'll need you know more tools. You'll be contacting more people. All right, Hayden. So thanks thanks for your time. And for chatting mm -hmm. with me, uh, you too, as other sellers that I talked to before, um, you prove that it's possible to, to be successful on Amazon, but you have to, of course, be well-informed, uh, spend some time, learn, and also learn from other sellers. Uh, and mm -hmm. of course, have the right tools uh, with you to help you. And for our viewers, uh, I dropped the link in the description to benefit for uh, 14 days free try with Eco. And also, if you share this video, this video you will have uh, two additional uh, weeks to try for free. So don't hesitate to do that. You can also visit our website, eco.com, for more information. So, Hayden, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a, have a great day. Thank you, Hayden. Bye bye.